All right, guys, welcome back to the Legal Gentleman YouTube channel. Today we've got Ernie in the chair. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. You good? Awesome, man. So, what are we doing today? What's the plan? Um, previously, I had a crop on top. Okay. So, this is kind of a slight perm, so my natural hair is a bit straight. Okay. Yeah. So, normally, what I do is a skin fade, but this time around, I want something. I still want to keep the skin fade, but I want something more neater. Like, like I want like a, like a gentleman haircut, but more old okay. school. Oh, okay. So yeah, too yeah. Much of like a high top. I'll okay. just pull on to the side. Okay, yeah, so you want something a bit more like, like what we call a classic haircut then? Like yeah, a, classic haircut. So like a parting of some sort, is that what yes, you want to do, I want, yeah? I want a part, but I'm quite particular about the parting. Okay. Because I have two holes, so then I want something more towards like, not so much to the side. Okay. A little bit. Okay. Eating, eating in a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, okay. Yeah, with a double crown, you want to, you've got, yeah, it's actually not too bad though, to be honest, because it's so close together. Yeah. It actually works. Let me just show the camera. So this type of double crown, you still need to be careful of it. Obviously, any double crown you've got to be careful of. But they, as you can see, there's the there's the two crowns there. But I, but it doesn't look. I think because Ernie's had the perm, it's really softened your hair. Yeah. So I think the double crown shouldn't be too much of an issue. I'm not saying that's something you should always uh, yeah. should always look to do. But um, I think probably the best thing to do on something like this is as much as like say say for example, Ernie came in and didn't really know where his where his pattern should be. Obviously, we can talk and discuss where the pattern. Yeah. There's all, you've got, we've got to have maybe a bit of a balance. If we don't get the part on right, yeah. like say you want it a bit too high or a bit too low, yeah. I can always come with my professional mm -hmm. suggestion, but yeah. you know, again, try and meet in the middle if we can. If someone's got a double crown, you ha then have to base it on which way the fringe grows. Because on a double crown, it'll either go left or right most of the time, especially on any's, it'll probably go this way as well, to be fair, because it will sit over. Maybe, probably better on the left, but it does still sit flat over, especially if he's got like a pomade in, which is probably what he's going to wear. It's all down to which way the fringe goes then. Right, so you pick it up and have a look at the hairline and just pull it back. Now, does it go better that way or does it go better that way? And whichever way it for forced itself back sooner is the way you don't want to go. So as you can see, you pull this over, it sits quite nice and easy. You force it from right to left, it pushes itself back a lot more. So the left-hand side is the way to go with the palm. Um, best thing to do with the palm though is we'll discuss that when it's wet, okay? Because it's very, with your hair being permed, it's very dry. Yeah. So obviously we'll wet it down and we'll find where the part is. Um, that's the best way to do it. Um, in terms of the skin fade though, what height are you actually thinking of? Because I've got my kind of height in mind. Uh, what, yeah, what are I, you thinking? I get what you mean. So because I'm getting a skin fade because my hair grows really quick. Yeah. And then I'm thinking more towards like a half leg. Like I don't want something too high. Yeah. Okay. Too, that's good. High. Okay. So that's good. Way. Yeah, yeah, no worries. That's cool. Um, we also need to look at the face shape as well. So this is something that when you're doing a, any form of like clipper work, or even any work really, um, but especially clipper work when you're doing something a bit different is we just need to have a little look when we're doing like say a fade for example we need to look at the height so obviously any wants a sort of like a, a sort of middle sort of height fade so nothing too low nothing too high just bang in the middle which is always the best one to go to it's, it's low and medium are always kind of the ones to go to i'd say but then we need to look at the face shape right so as you can see any's face shape you can see where it starts to concave on the sides right you can see where the head shape starts to round in here that's the rounded head, that's where it starts to concave in. So we need to make sure we're coming up and off. We're leaving some length and bulk here because that's what will frame out the jawline. And that's all we're looking for really. We're looking to try and create uh, the perfect face shape for any, or just to complement what he's already got. That's what we're looking for. So if we look at that, it doesn't come out too far. Now, if you look at mine, if I put mine on the same place, look how wide mine comes out. Can you see what I mean? It does change on it, but it's not like it's like a, it's not like it's a sort of, um, it's like a trick. It does change on everybody. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's something you can do yourself. You know, if you need to, you know, if you want to get to know a bit more about your face shape, you look like you've got slightly oval, slightly diamond face shape. Probably say more diamond, I would say, just because the cheekbones protrude out a bit more, and it concaves here as well a lot more. So I'd say he's got a slightly diamond face shape. But I want to, I want to accentuate the, the the leanness in his face. You can see he's in he's in good shape. So you want to you want to kind of show that off a bit more as well. And it comes down to the haircut too, um, because again, when you're wearing something maybe parted over. Yeah. Um, a little bit of height at the foot would be quite nice for you as well, just okay. to kind of balance the whole length of the face too. Okay. But we'll get into that as we get cutting. All right. All right, well, let's get your gown up and uh, we'll get started. All right. Okay. Just wet this down. It's nice and clean when he came in. So we're just wetting it down for him. Now, this is a good way to see exactly how the perm is. As you can see, it's quite curly, but that doesn't really matter too much. The only thing we need to work on is, is just the blow drying technique. And we'll, we'll discuss this with, with, uh, with any as we, as we get into this, but that's what we kind of, we want to talk about. But first of all is the part, and this is the, this is the key one, right? Because this haircut is cut into the shape. 
So we need to get the part and bang on what you want, yeah. how I want it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a part in first. Okay. And I'm going to tell you where I think it should be mm -hmm. or where I think you can get away with. Okay. Then you can tell me higher, lower, a bit like a game show. All right. Higher, lower, where the partner should come from. Now, this is again, we talk about classic haircuts. I was traditionally trained. So this is my take on a classic haircut. Okay. But from what I was trained on. So I always bring it out from the partner and then I'm going to bring it down. I'm probably going to do it just on a slight angle. Right. And then you can tell me, okay, this is again, this is not how it's going to get cut. This is just my sort of idea straight away. Okay, yeah. just the first one. It's much easier if I put a part in yeah. and then we move it up and down, all right? So that is my idea of a classic finish, all right? Mm -hmm. Now you can tell me, let me just get it perfect. Right, so that is where, if you came in, you were a blank canvas and you wanted this haircut, yeah. that is where I would put it. Now, where would you like it? Would you like it higher, a bit lower, a bit more less on an angle? What would you prefer? I quite like it, except that, how is this like gonna be fit? Like, do you suggest that it's gonna be higher or do you suggest that it's gonna keep it the same length? It's gonna go with your face shape. Yeah. So it's gonna be cut into that shape there. Like oh, that. okay, okay. So it's not gonna be shaved up to the line or nothing like that. It's gonna be cut into, yeah. it's gonna balance both okay. sides. Um, so you're gonna still leave length here because you still need to keep the shape in through there. So that's gonna be that's gonna be the same as the other side. Mm -hmm. So, but that you're gonna still leave length in there. So it's gonna go shorter through here mm -hmm. and you'll have more length for the walls to the back. I feel like I like a little bit more volume here so like more volume yeah little, like so like tilt it what do you think yeah like, if you yeah you can go a bit further yeah yeah, of course. Bit. yeah yeah that's fine so what we do there is we come from this bit here from where the, the turn is at the crown and we bring it across a bit more like that and then we just perfect it that's why it's good using a comb like this one with a little section and tooth at the front there it's really good to get patterns in but that's moved over a bit more would you like it further higher? Yeah, perfect. Is that all right? Yeah? yeah cool, good, man. Yeah. And then the thing is with volume here, though, you can create more volume yourself with a hairdryer if oh, you yeah. want to. If you want that to stick, like to yeah. really stand out, you can just create that. But yeah, we'll be keeping length through here. We're not going to be doing the, the sort of what you, the, the more modern take on a side pot you see nowadays where it's just shaved up to the line and left longer. We're not, yeah. That's not what we're going to do. And that, that's, that's pretty much it. Now, at the front, do you want this to sit slick back like so, or do you want it to sit more across to the side? More across to the side. More across to the side. Yeah, okay. But, but not super down, but just like a little bit like side, but a little bit up a bit. A little bit up. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So would you say more, a bit more, like obviously it's not cut yet, but we just kind of get the idea yeah. then. But something like that where it kind of sits back into this part here yeah, as well. Yeah. 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 Something along the lines of that. Yeah. All right. Cool. So that's all we do. We get the part in first, then we cut it into the shape. So I'll be cutting the top first, working around to the right, to the right hand side cutting my um, guide in through the sides here and I'll be working on my skin fade. So it's it's a bit of a different way of doing things in a way that this is the way I was taught like traditionally to do a side part. Um, and the, the, to be honest, these are one of my favorite haircuts to do because I, you know, it kind of takes me back to my roots a little bit as well, which is nice. We're going to work with Ernie on this one, okay? Because we need to work out the length that he wants. And that's, this is a good way of getting this haircut absolutely perfect for the client, right? Basically, we let Ernie tell us how he wants it, okay? What length he'd like. And then this will work at pretty much any length, okay? Obviously, unless you go down to finger length. But what we do, we start from the middle. We never start from the parton, okay? We need to leave the parton the longest length throughout this haircut, okay? Because that's the thing that creates the shape through the top. It always gets shorter as it gets into the to transition area to the bottom. So we don't work along the parton. So this always needs to be the longest point through here. Because as we dry that through, that's what will create that nice square shape through the top, all right? So we start down the exact middle okay so starting from the front yeah. how much length do you want off what would you say i'm gonna pick some up uh, and then you can tell me yeah, yeah. let's get back to where we were what we need to do now is work out exactly how much any wants to take off the top yeah. okay yeah so section i would probably say a finger in width because we are removing length if we were keeping a lot of length on there then we'd probably do it a bit wider so how much would you like to lose i'm gonna pull it up from halfway I kind of want your opinion on this because with okay. these haircuts, I don't know how long I want it to be because if it's too long, then it gets a bit heavy. Yeah. But then if it's too short, then it gets a bit too spiky, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what, what do you think? Um, well, let's have a look at where the, where, where the perm comes from as well. That's yeah. one thing we need to look at. Okay, so the perm sort of comes from that point there. You know, when you push it down, you can kind of see where the curl starts there. Yeah. So obviously you'll still have a little bit of bend in there, which you need weight in this haircut yeah. though, believe it or not. You don't want to thin this haircut out yeah. a lot, especially with your hair texture. Mm -hmm. If you thin it out, basically any form of thinning out we do in any haircut, you're removing length. Okay. And the last thing you want to do is remove length in, your, yeah. in this yeah. style. This style needs to be cut very blunt yeah. and very kind of to the shape. Okay, you can thin out a little bit, but you need to be careful how much you thin out. I would say about that much, just the ends. Because if you look there, yeah. 
that's where your haircut's been thinned out previously. Yeah. So that would make it actually really, really kind of classic because you wouldn't have that bluntness underneath it. Perfect. That's what I'd say. Then. Yeah, do that, yeah. Cool, man. There we go. And then, like I said, straight across, this needs to be club cut or blunt cut, as we call it, right? Again, same size section, nice and small, because we're taking a bit of length off. We work it straight from the front to the back, okay? That's what we're looking at. So what we're doing, by bringing it straight up, we're naturally over-directing the fringe, because if we were to angle it forwards, as you can see, length will come off more. There's a the guy from behind, we're angling it forwards, but we're angling it straight up, so we're keeping that length at the front, and then everything just comes completely level and straight towards the back. The beauty of it is as well, you can, you know, if you are working like this, working from the front and you've got your two guides, you've got your guide from the first section, your guide from the second section. If you are, you know, if a fire alarm goes off, like it's just been going off here, um, and we have to stop, then you can just get straight back into your, your haircut and you'll know where you're up to. So again, hair, hair cutting is all about guides um, and, you know, you want to make sure you don't lose your guide. And this is a good way of not losing the guide. There we go, picking up, see, just following the guide from the previously cut section. Bearing in mind, and he's got his double crown, so we don't want to cut it over the crown. We always leave it one section before. So the same principles go as like every other haircut that I do, I always leave the crown to the end, okay? Because you don't know what's going to happen with it. It's, it, can, it, can, it can kid you thinking it's going to be okay when it's wet and then you dry it off and it sticks up. I'm sure we've all had that. So I always leave the crown to the very end. So there's the last section before the crown, okay? Picking it up, there's the guide and cutting straight. So essentially the back becomes shorter, the front becomes longer, okay? But we are leaving this section here because that's the section that's gonna create the shape and create it to sit a bit flatter for them as well and hold that shape in place. And also it's gonna have where the disconnection of the partners as well. So it, it works really, really well to leave that length here, not just to create the shape for any face that we need to try and balance out, but also the fact that he can find where his partner is too. Now I'm cutting this fairly wet, but I'm doing it, I'm, I'm spraying the water. You'll probably, see me, well, you'll probably see me spray it a lot more than normal because the perm is very dried. Okay, his hair is very dried out because obviously we've gone against this sort of natural um, sort of genetic makeup of his hair and we were, it's been permed to, to create curl and straight hair. So it's very dry towards the ends, but that's fine. You just need to keep wetting it down a bit more. Now we work along this section here. So we use the guide from the, the middle in the front, we pull that straight up and we cut. And we're gonna work around the head here, okay? Because this section, we're gonna create the squareness. And then as you've seen from the, the first um, little kind of check of his face shape as well, when he sat down, we can kind of, you don't have to come too far out. So again, we're following that shape too, okay? As you can see, it sticks fairly straight up as well. It's not too far out or anything. So that's what we're looking for. So I can get away with taking this corner through here, leaving a little bit of corner on the transition area and going from there. Working back again, I'm not gonna cut the crown because he's got two crowns, one on this side, one straight down the middle. So we're working to just before the crown, just there, like so. Wanna connect the front in, it's got a very good hairline, so we don't need to try and strengthen that up, it's strong enough, so we can start straight at the recession point. And we use our guy from the top, not the guy from underneath, the guy from the top, remember we're working from the top. And that's where we start our connection, through here. So even if a lot doesn't come off, we're still following the guide, okay? Obviously, but wearing it into a crop, it looks as though the top's being quite top heavy and the, the blend's being taken fairly high, as you can see by how little length's coming off through here. But we're still following our guide from the top. And we wear this all the way around. So again, we're not crossing over the crown, we're just following this all the way around to the back. And even if not a lot comes off, we still want that guide that we're creating for when we do our clipper work. And this is what this is doing. So not only is it creating the shape for the sides, it's also allowing me to see where the guide needs to come from as well. So I can start the guide for the left-hand side. And also I've got a guide when it comes to clipper work too. There we go. And then one section just down the middle, like so. Now what we've done there is we've left the crown. We haven't touched any of this part here. As you can see, that's still a lot longer. There's the point. That's a lot longer than anywhere else. That's what we need to look for. We want to leave that crown in. It makes it easier for us. Now, I'm going to cut the fringe in now a little bit. So I'm going to take a section straight across, just before the apex. And I'm going to cut this fringe. This fringe needs to come on this angle. So again, we're going to need more length through here. We're going to leave this length here and cut it to connect. 
into the corner there. So he doesn't have an overhanging fringe. I'm gonna go on this angle now. So we're gonna use this guide here when I just match up to this bit here and just come straight across, okay? So there's the hair that he came in with. And this is the guide we're using. We're bringing it straight down like so, taking away this bit of corner here and coming into where we cut it at the recession, like so. And what you'll see, that connects in perfectly like that. So we've still got the length in there and that connects in there. So it's not overhanging, which is what we're looking for. And now we use our guide from the right hand side. So we do. Can you see the difference in the length sitting through here compared to here? Just follow that around. Pick that up horizontally and we use that guide there. And this allows us to match up to the other side as well. Because we are creating this haircut now. Remember, this haircut was not cut in when he came in. We are going to create this haircut for him. Make sure the head's nice and straight as well. Right, so I'm going to do, I'm going to dry it off now. Um, first of all, any, do you want me to, when you're going to dry your hair yourself at home, yeah. are, you going to, are you going to leave the towel dry and then put pomade in or, or a clay, or are you actually going to blow dry this? Because blow drying this will probably, especially for a classic haircut, will probably take the pair amount. Yeah, or as much. I, I normally blow dry it. You normally blow dry put me in. Okay, cool, cool. I'm going to use a little bit of the Balmain Texturizing Salt Spray. It's always a good one to use. It smells great and holds fantastic. So you don't need an awful lot of this, okay? Just enough to kind of coat the top and through that blending area as well. So we're looking for a medium speed in the middle setting of your hairdryer and a high heat. And I'm going to start on the left hand side. I'm going to start to dry this bit in first, okay? So using this brush, we're going to roll it around like that. And that's where the volume will come in, okay? So wrapping it around like so, and then I bring it back a little bit as well. So when you start to dry off the haircut, you start to see the haircut coming to life a bit more. And then I always find it easy, more visual. I find it easier, we, we, you know, this job is a very visual job. I always find that once you've dried it into shape or if you start on the top and you dry it in first, when you're working on the back and sides, you've already seen the end result, minus the back and sides, because the sides are going down to skin anyway. So you've already visioned the end result. All you're gonna do is perfect it. And then obviously fade the back and sides. Finish with a bit of cold air. Just to set it a bit more. There we go. Now, working around the side here. Now, we start to build the shape up. We take a fairly wide section, using the brush width, like so, and dry over this side now. We just work from the left-hand side up to the partner. Same goes if his partner's on the other side as well. Same thing. Wrapping it around the brush. And the salt spray is out of the base for the hold. It's going to hold the shape in place for us while we start our clipper work. But also it's going to start to give any a bit of an understanding of how his style is going to look. Obviously, this is all, you know, pre-styling product. This is all just base product and obviously, you know, the shape that we're cutting into it. But it starts to give him a bit of an understanding of what his hair will look like. And also it's very visual for you to see as well where you need to maybe adjust bits or chip into bits or whatever you need to break bits up, whatever you need to do. Go straight up and then over into your previous sections. Now finally, we're going to do the front. Turn the hair dry around, so it's facing the, the, the suction part's facing the bottom and the nozzle's facing upwards and we start to dry this in. Now we want to, he said he didn't want a lot of height, but what we do is always dry a bit more height in it than what he'd actually really want because as soon as a product goes in, especially a heavy product like a pomade, it's going to flatten a little bit as well. It's going to drop a touch as well. We can also manipulate how much height we put in there as well. But the product will help to drop it. So I always dry it upright to start with and then just finish off by drying it over like so. Again, this doesn't have to be perfectly blow dried right now. I don't believe. I believe you can perfect this a little bit later on once the haircut's done, but for now, this just gives us a really good understanding of what we're trying to achieve. All right, so that is a look just dried through and everything else just falls in with the fade.
as well. All right. Right, so as I always do, I start with the number two when I'm doing any form of skin fade. Now this number two is what I find the easiest to blend into any length that we cut it into the top. Just helps me out a little bit, a little bit more as well. So number two first, I'm gonna start on the right hand side. So number two in, and this becomes our baseline for the transition to the top. Like so. Then open guard and just flick off up into a transition area like so. Then we need to drop this down to follow the head shape at the back as well. But also double crown, we need to be really careful. So we're dropping it down just to the occipital bone. And I'm using the occipital bone at the back to act as my kind of, my leverage to come up and off like so. So what it allows me to do is keep this length through here, build shape up to the back. Obviously stop the double crown from sticking up at any point and also blend it in very nicely as well. Down to a 2.5. But I'm also giving myself a wider area as well to do a nice stretch blend as well on the face. It's nice and seamless into that top as well. And just match up to the back like so. And then down to the two, two and a half or 2.5. And just work it up and off into that transition area. Now we start on our zero line. So we're going to do about a medium fade. So just, just be below the middle, about there is where my zero is going to go to. And the rest is going to be then stretched out to create that lovely seamless blend. What's quite nice as well, by going just below the temple, it allows me to shape this area too. Again, looking for that classic finish. So nice detailing around the, uh, the hairline will look really nice for this haircut. And then it'll make the fade stand out a lot more as well. Now the good thing is this haircut is open to interpretation as well. So if you do it a different way, you know, it's okay. It's not, this isn't the only one way to do it. This is just my way of doing it. If you prefer to do the fade first and blend up, that's cool. Again, this is just, you know, hopefully gonna add a little bit more to your, to your repertoire of skills um, than you might already have as well, just doing it a different way. So my detailers now. I'm going to shape up the temple. I'm not going to go into um, anywhere up towards the hairline or anything like that on the fringe, just, just here. Start shaping too much, it grows out too fast. So just, just, we'll just add this little arch into the fade that'll make it just stand out a little bit more as well. I just work the trimmers up into the clippers and pull away. Just try not to leave too harsh a line. So we can just pull on away just as we get to where the zero line was is leaving that hair there, that our baseline there. So you're getting as much much scalp exposure as possible, but still making it easy for me to blend in as well. And then going down with my shaver as well now. Into that temple area just to sharpen it off even more. Can use a cut throw for that if you prefer to as well. We can open off into the trimmers.
So what we'll do now, I'm gonna blend the number two into that transition area now. So I'm gonna start at the back, and I've got my guide. Remember, I've got my guide from where we cut across uh, on our horizontal sections from here, and also we work vertically around this side as well. So I've got my guide already. So as I pick it up, so there's my guide as I pick it up. There we go, All right? As you can see, if we get lower down, more hair comes through, and you can see the guide just coming across the top of the comb there as well. As you see, there's the guide there that we're using. So we're gonna perfect this and we're clipper over comb into our clipper work, like so. So I work clipper over comb down from the top and then I work back up again just to cross check. Pick it up. And then we work down to our clipper work. And then for this type of hair, I always work over as well. Very similar to my hair as well, just when anything is very spiky and it stands out, I always work down as well. And start to let it collapse onto itself now. Got the shape cut in. We're keeping our guide, we're keeping the volume that any asked for. Now, same again from the left-hand side, working around to the right-hand side. Now, so what I've got, if I start at the back, I've got the guide all the way around the left-hand side. I can see in the mirror how that shape is starting to take place now as well. So we're keeping that volume through there. We're keeping that lovely shape sitting in the haircut. And now I just connect it to the other side now as well. Now we come on to blending our fading now. One guard onto one and a half. Switch into a smaller comb too. I'm gonna work up and off. Lower it down to a one. And work it up as well. And now using the little knots on the side here, we're between a one and a one and a half, and I work that up and off as well, like so. Just through here. And you see, I'm just touching that with the end of the clip of the actual guard, but I'm not cutting it. So the hair's moving, but I'm not actually cutting that hair. That's you can see the angle I'm coming off at for the transition. And then guard off, tilt the head over, like so. So no guard, just leave it down on 0.5, and just working that, using the head tilted over, and working that up and off, like so. Then working through the guard until we get down to skin. Half guard's always a good one. You just work it over in the darker areas that you see. Like so. Just on to another set of minis, my trimmers, and I work this over the zero and the skeleton trimmers that we use as well to go further down. I just find that gives a really nice Seamless blend. Half hour goes on, open, and I just use this just to fine tune any darker areas. I don't want to go too high up with the half guard open. Like we said at the start again, all about fine tuning. Do the haircut first and then fine tune. Now everything else will be done to over comb when we come to finish the whole haircut off. One guard on. Same thing again. Tilt the head over. And wake up and off. Waking up into our two.
Looking down to my wand. Open lever. So head over again. And work up and off into your wand. And just working through the lever. Using the little notches on the side. Until you get down to zero. Half guard. And then trimmers just to break along that blend down the bottom. And just a little bit of cut over the comb just to perfect it. So as you can see, I've got this side blended, that side blended from the back. I can see exactly where the blending point needs to come as well. Turn that around, you can see. See the shape we've created. And you can also see where we need to blend in from as well. The height of the one and a half, the height of the one, the height of the 0.5. One guard on, head down from it. There we go, that's that. Down to the one. I'm just using the corner of the blade because it's quite bumpy through there. You can see. I'm just using the corner of the blade to go a little bit shorter in them areas just to make it look a bit smoother on the blend. Now, scissor over comb just to perfect. And then you can work through here, make sure everything is sitting absolutely perfectly. Pick it up, and then just along that line, point cut into there. So again, we're picking the areas we want to soften. Like I said, perfect everything at the end. There's no point in doing this right now, uh, like at the start. You still need to blend it in, obviously with the clippers first. As you can see, I'm not going short enough that it's going to stick out. Just literally the very ends of that blend, like so. That makes it nice and seamless for them as well. Now, I want some more perfecting on this side now, so we get into the crown. I'm going to start doing some scissor over comb into the crown, so I can see how that's fallen now. That's fallen nicely. Wouldn't want to take too much more off here though, because that still needs to sit nice. So I'm going to work up into our crown now. Wasted a little bit too long. Back onto my size five comb now. And this is a section from the crown, so it's quite long. And now I'm going to pick it up just through the top here. And this is where the double crown is. So I just want to break the ends up. I don't want to take 
much length of I just want to take the thickness out the ends there just so it falls a little bit smoother like that same this side out as well over here okay, I'm not cutting into the crown the crown's there I'm just cutting into that blending point a little bit so it's a little bit softer and then over this side finally coming from the crown like so just cutting into a blending point there like that along here just through the tops there and cut a little bit just to help thin it out a tiny bit here's the crown as you can see now look you see all that length sitting through there and we're not going too far in i don't want this hair to stick out or anything like that i just want it to sit a bit softer there we go how's that length look for you buddy yeah it's perfect uh, length all right yeah? yeah cool man cool so i think what we'll do to finish it off well i'll ask you but i'll give you my suggestion is uh, obviously a pomade because it's the most classic you can find yeah. would you like that kind of high shine kind of look to it or would you prefer something a bit drier what would you prefer uh, I want something more, what, what is the best, like, classic look? Pomade. Or, yeah, pomade, yeah. It's, if, if you, if you, you, you go with that, yeah. yeah okay. But if you look back to all the old, um, like, the Elvis days and the Sinatra days and stuff like that, it was all slick, wasn't it? Yeah, and that yeah. was usually used by Brill Cream or, you know, um, Vaseline or something like that. It was all, it wasn't, it, and pomades, obviously, but there was obviously, a, in the class divide, there was obviously different products people used to get the hair to look slick. Yeah. Um, some used to use lard if they were very poor. But that, the main focus on the haircut was that it was, it was slick, yeah. you know? So um, I think, yeah, a pomade, fantastic for that, yeah. All right, cool, man. So I'm gonna use the uh, classic pomade by Damon Barber. Uh, this, is, this is actually a, um, an oil-based uh, pomade, which to be honest, it's probably better for your hair, okay? The best way to wash this out is to use a, a dry shampoo to start with. So when you get in the shower, before you wet your hair, because obviously oil repels the water, um, emulsify shampoo into your hair so basically just rub shampoo into your hair before, I, before you wet it okay. and that'll break down the product and then just wash it as normal all right so i always lay a pomade in okay so i'll take about that much off right yeah out the tub and i'll put a bit on the back of my hand right and what i do is we put this on the top first okay, okay? so on here yeah. like so through the crown and on top like that right now the rest of it i work into the hair now okay like so, into by the parton. Keep the parton in though. Don't lose the parton just yet. And then really work this into your head, okay? And you wanna work this right in to the middle. I know it looks crazy, but again, this is application, not styling, okay? Yeah. And then we get our comb, wide tooth comb or whatever comb you've got. I always like a clipper comb for this. I think it just gives a bit of a, a nice finish. And then we just show off that parton a bit more. But the good thing about, an, about like an oil pomade or the classic pomade is that the water soluble ones are great or the water based ones are great, but they're very hard to rub it as they kind of like comb into the hair. Where when you've got the oil based ones or the cream based pomades, they just sit in the hair so much better and they're just so much more reworkable that you can like apply them and fix them with your fingers as well to create shape. And what we do is we comb that over like so. And then It's down to you on the height that you want. But I always think having the fringe isolated a bit more like that gives a much better finish. And then whatever's left on your hands, you can just use to push the fringe in, like so. So not too high, flatten it down a little bit. Just have that little bit of extra height in there so you can see from side on the difference of the fringe being slightly sort of um, disconnected to everywhere else. And it's all down to you then, just perfecting it. I always think it looks nice when you push the sides back a bit, because that's what it gives the volume. And then we just push on the blend there. And that keeps that volume in there for you as well. So and this is probably more about the actual styling, the aftercare of the, of the styling, than like the blow dry. You know what I mean? Blow dry is important, but you could probably apply this when it's a bit towel dried and still get the same effect, you know? Now, a good little trick that I always do, back of your hands, you've got no pomade on. I always do that just to smooth it off. So if you applied it through your hands like this, yeah. turn your hands around, just flatten it off, because there's nothing on the back of your hands. Yeah. And that just gets the little flyaways, like so. And that just smooths it all off for you. 
And that is pretty much it. Now, if you wanted to, don't have to, but if you want to, put a bit of hairspray on if you want. But I think having that kind of slight pliability to it's quite nice. Imagine you get your comb and you just flick it back through your hair. You could do it all day with this style. All right. Happy, yeah? Yeah, it's spotless. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Thank you.